Welcome back, another episode. For a variety of reasons, many of which are highlighted and I'm not drowning fast enough, episode 7 of season 2, I can state with some degree of certainty that Tell Me Lies is the most distressing show ever created. Oliver comes dangerously close to overtaking Stephen in the race to become the most punchable character on television. But to our collective dismay, the defending champion pulls ahead in the last meters. I'm just exhausted, readers. Everything starts with a dream. Stephen remembers the night of Macy's passing in it, including his shock at realizing she was dead in the passenger seat and his awakening following the incident. Then he thinks of Lucy again. She pulls Macy into the driver's seat, leads Stephen out of the car, and gives him assurances that he would be alright. In the interim, the ominous reminder of that terrible Thanksgiving continues to loom large. Lucy is acting strangely about Stephen and hasn't spoken to Leo. Diana has not heard from anyone. Bree's photographs are all garbage. What's even more terrible is that this tiny incident wasn't even the pinnacle of extremely awkward social situations. The entire class has been invited to Marion's house for the holidays. December naturally, Bree is unsure on whether or not to go Marion and Oliver's house. Oliver will be co-hosting, which will be awful, but Bree is just a pain in the neck who enjoys making everything ten times more awkward than it has to be. Oliver also brings her a new camera as an early Christmas present, which he gives her in his office in between kisses. How did he know that the elderly one was acting strangely? Was it sabotaged by him? That's exactly the spooky thing a 45-year-old man would do when he slept with a youngster. At the party, Bree seems aloof and says strange things. Marion likens the entire situation to the movie Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, which neither Lucy nor Bree can recall in great detail. Warning, this story contains spoilers. It centers on a deranged, hopeless pair who treat their guests like psychopaths, and use them as pawns in their own bizarre game of psychosexual cat and mouse. Oliver is terrible. As much as I hate talking about Oliver because it makes me feel ill, we can't ignore what goes down at the party between him and Bree because it's crazy. Oliver plays the part of a kind, innocent guy for a time before luring Bree into a laundry room. Wipe off your lipstick, he says in a sinister way, like a man who has had plenty of extramarital affairs. The two then have sex while Brie gawks at Marion's laundry. She feels incredibly uncomfortable about the whole thing, and she even has a small panic attack when Oliver gives her one of Marion's nightgowns to change into. Oliver blurts out that he loves her because she's making too much noise, and she responds with childish delight, saying it again even as he walks away. Lucy wears a look of distaste as she watches Brie walk out of the laundry room. Could you image how insanely you would have to act to upset Lucy, of all people? Brie, however, elevates misbehavior to a whole new level when she goes back to the laundry room and leaves her earrings inside of Oliver's slacks. She has blatantly accepted the myth that he loves her, believes they can be together, and has chosen to ruin his marriage in order to hasten their separation. Enjoyable. Wrigley and Pippa. To be honest, the issue is a little unclear. They have sex after Wrigley confides in Pippa about her attraction to a girl, and they both open up about how much they're dealing with Drew neglecting them. They appear a little taken aback by spending so much time together on the platonic level. Steven is at the top of my list of characters I don't support. And I'm not drowning fast enough, he has a long list of scumbag moments. Such as pouting at Diana for her father breaking up with her, saying hurtful and insensitive things to Wrigley in an attempt to destroy their relationship, and then re-establishing himself in Lucy's life. For more videos, subscribe.